this week on the Nook, Doom with a side of sauce. Doom. 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 I'm drinking some uh, some ginger tea. Uh, like I said last week, I'm not drinking beer for a little while. Matt is though, so yeah. this is now Matt's beer corner. Yes, yes, my beer corner over here. Uh, tonight I'm drinking Eraser IPA from Rough Draft. Good stuff, seven uh, percent, mm. clear, nice and uh, nice and clear. I like it. And perhaps I, I drank some of that the last time I drank beer. Nice, that's legit. I think I saw that in the fridge. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, in the Nico fridge. got it for me. Nice, that's the way. And, yeah, it's uh, pretty good. Crossing my fingers for uh, your future job opportunity there. That would be right. pretty awesome. Right, right. Should be legit. This looks like cax piss. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was cax. <laughs> Good stuff. John, kombucha? That's yeah. I guess. Brewed beverage of choice this evening. Kombucha, gingerberry. No surprise for some, but uh, it works. That's the way. It doesn't look like cax piss. <laughs> and Mike Ah, uh, coconut water Again, uh, it's kind of laying off beer for a minute Or, well, I don't know, I was thinking like a month or something So the next two episodes, I think if I've done the math on that right, I can count to four, I think <laughs> Now that you're sober? Yeah, now that I'm sober, <laughs> yes, I can count to four <laughs> One, one thousand, two, one thousand Why, How did I get to a thousand? <laughs> uh, so seriously uh, I think it's an uh, important topic to discuss working outside the state and preparing for the possibility of doom uh, I've been preparing although I you never really feel completely prepared, you know what I mean? Um, but I've been, I've been doing it for probably a year now, slowly building up supplies and things like that. Um, yeah, and, you know, making plans in case you have to bug out. Have my bug out bag. Did the, tested it out. Uh, what was that, a couple months ago, I guess? So do you think that everybody should prepare, or do you think that it's just... I mean, do you, what, if everybody prepares to bug out, where's everyone going to bug out to? <laughs> I, I think that... That's a good point. But, but then again, the percentage of people who will actually prepare for a disaster is pretty small, I'd say. Most people are just, you know, too distracted by everyday life. I think if you already are in a rural type environment, you don't necessarily you need to. In. Yeah, exactly. Bug in, yeah. <laughs> Dig in. Yeah, that's um, a good call. You know, I, I think it's a good point to mention that as libertarians, we all officially have a bunker already. It's just part of the deal when you become a libertarian. You just kind of look out the backyard and you're like, oh, the bunker. Yeah. It's yeah. going to build one of those. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a. Uh, completely unprepared i'm just, i'm being honest like i <laughs> well, got back i have a large backpack but you know, beyond that you know it's not packed and ready to go a couple granola bars in there man <laughs> <laughs> i can eat that gold later that's all i need <laughs> uh, that that's a point too that uh you know uh i i i think uh in this uh community there is uh a tendency and don't get me wrong, definitely going to be useful that, you know, like, oh, I'm just going to, like, stack a bunch of silver or gold and, and I'll be peachy. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you can't eat gold and you can't eat silver. Now, you can you can obviously trade for other things that you're going to need in, you know, case of doom with sauce on the side. But, um, you know, you can't, you can't eat it, so how far are you going to be able to go to trade with it? And at that point, depending on how chaotic things are, somebody may not take the whole, like, silver offer seriously. They're going to be really just be like... You know what am yeah. I gonna do with this? And they're gonna want they're gonna want food, toilet paper. That's gonna be a necessity. Clean you know water. I mean? All that sort Plus of stuff. Plus lead often yes. trumps silver. That is uh, what is that? That's one of the four precious metals, right? You're gonna <laughs> platinum, gold, silver, and lead. So you know it, it's uh, 
that is a... We're yeah. talking about bullets for those who haven't uh, figured that out yet. <laughs> uh, speaking about bullets, we were able to get a nice look at a unregistered rifle today. Yeah, nice. A uh, good friend of ours brought it down, uh, uh, Kevin Ken Kenneth Kenneth from Connecticut. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, no, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, pretty nice that you can still do that. Um, you know, you, you know, you find your little pockets of freedom, right? You know, like, right. okay, well, I can't go out and buy this particular weapon and do all this, or, well, I could, but then it's going to have a number on it, and, and in the case of doing with sauce on the side, what are you going to do? You know, like, when they come and take it from you. Yeah, because I mean that is because they got look more at, guns. Look yeah. at New Orleans, what they did after Katrina. Yeah, right. I mean, it, it, there, it's already happened. You know, before this is right. not like some some crazy non nonsense that when shit got really bad, that's exactly what happened. Is they went and started going around running out people's guns. Yeah, so it would make sense to maybe have a gun that doesn't have numbers on it, that doesn't have your paperwork exactly. on it with a fingerprint, which you know is what happens when you go to buy a gun, at least in this state, you have to give them your fingerprint and, you know, your, you know, your social security number, all that nonsense, fill out a couple other, you know, please master forms, and then you get it, you know. There is a loophole, though. If you build your own rifle, you do not have to legally have it registered. So you can legally own a weapon that is not registered if you build it yourself. And the law further states, 80%, if the item is 80% less or less of a gun, then it's not a gun. So they sell these, what they're, they're called, 80% uh, 80, uh, 80 oh, lower geez. receivers. Yeah. And basically what you do is you build your own weapon, you, you get the upper receiver, you get the 80% lower receiver, drill a couple of holes... And you have yourself a rifle completely unregistered and legal, so you're not going to get it taken away should the cops... You're not going to legally have it taken away. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> well, they could still take it anyways because they said something, but I guess before before the event of doom, if you were to get pulled over and that was in right. your trunk of your car, properly secured, what, however the hell that works, I can't even remember. Yeah, but there's you know certain things you got to do, no, no, no. Properly secured, even without serial numbers, they can't. They couldn't take it from you. Yeah. Doesn't mean that they, you won't end up on a list somewhere, but you know. <laughs> We're already on those. Yeah. 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 Might as well be at the top, right? Y yes. <laughs> Question is, how many different lists are we on? Eh, mm. Screw. Mm. Screw their lists. As far as I get, We're as far on local lists, apparently. Yeah, yeah, ideally, you're on, you on the local be list. At the top of the list, uh, but you know someone who is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, man. it's time to bug out. <laughs> yeah, that's a good topic, too. Uh, when is it appropriate to bug out? Like, at what point do you say, okay, I need to go somewhere off the grid? Mm. That is a good, uh, definitely a valid question. When right FEMA there. camps go live? <laughs> uh, that would be a great occasion. A lot of people put that trip. at... When they come for my guns, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at that point, I mean, when they come for your, <laughs> the guy in the town over his guns. Right, that's that's <laughs> when you really got to go. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, there's already stuff going down now that I would have put on my list like 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so that list just keeps getting moved along. Are you uh, are you talking about like the the ammo ban thing? I, don't, I, I heard they got reversed. Okay, uh, the ATF said it was a uh, clerical error. <laughs> <laughs> Which took him a couple weeks to rectify. Like, and I'm oh, pretty sure uh, the president even was justifying it. So I don't know how it was a clerical error. Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. Why are you justifying clerical errors? I think that was just errors? them testing the waters. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're, they're throwing up their little weather balloon to That's see where a, it goes. A pressure yeah. test, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So no, I'm, talk I'm talking about laws, so, like, like, we can throw you in jail for any reason. No questions asked. Or we can uh, use drones to kill American citizens. Right. Yeah. We won't do it on American soil. <laughs> Probably not. But <laughs> does American yeah. does American <laughs> soil mean Pacific Islands out in the middle of nowhere? Does American soil mean something that's not on a military base? You know, like there right. that that secret that, prisons in Chicago. Yeah, that was definitely something on on my list for sure. When I read that, I'm like, 
didn't I tell myself when that started happening I was going to get out of here? <laughs> like, hmm. Yeah, that's what I think that in the William Benny discussion, William B Benny interview recently, uh, he said that uh, basically, if I remember correctly, all the metadata to uh, relevant to all the interrelationships in the virtual world, essentially, could be held in an 800 square foot room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And yet they're building like whatever oh, yeah, it is. They're not, they're not starting with metadata. Right, right. exactly. That's yeah. the point is that it, it, uh, they're talking metadata, but they're storing a hell of a lot more than metadata. But anyway, so yeah. Do you, do you think that there's a, a larger plan behind all the data storage? Do you think they're. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, do, do you think they're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what is that? Yeah. Plan? There's a plan, man. You don't, you, don't, you don't build a mega fucking facility <laughs> in the middle of nowhere for no fucking reason. Do you think it's an attempt just to uh, keep track of dissidents, or do you think. I mean, what do you think they're really doing with that? It, yeah. I think, it's, I think it's everybody, to be honest. It, it's too. Because, see, what. I mean, this, this is the way. I mean, they're, they're probably going to make the thing as close to possible as being Google searchable. <laughs> as in, like, they're just going to have some, like, you know... I'm sure Google will help them. Yeah, they really. probably will. You know, they'll, they'll have some sort of, like, you know, internal site that they go to on whatever computer terminal, and they'll probably use it to see where trends are going, what sort of information they're collecting. Well, I mean, the military has a ton of uh, their own networks that they store information on. And yeah. They're much, I believe they're much faster than the regular Internet. Yeah. That's so they'll, they'll probably use something like that. So they, I think that's what, what the thing is to get everybody's data. And then if, some, if, there seems to, if they're getting a bunch of flags pop up about, like, hey, we're pissed, everybody's angry, they'll know where more people are pissed and angry, and they'll send, like, you know, the local Gestapo over there. Don't they have a TV but, show but that you, I, talks I think about it, this stuff? I, I think it could be even more nefarious than that, in that they, they could be analyzing this data to know when the point to make a bigger move, you know? Well, true. Yeah. So it's all on file, and I imagine that it's something like, okay, uh, person X is a problem, and who knows person X, and then they can come back and build a case off of information that's years old. But not just to, that. To go I'm, round someone up. You know, I'm talking even, up, I'm right? talking like even like uh, thoughts on different government policies, all this right. data mine that, basically see which which tyrannical uh, oppression is easily as accepted at the moment, you right. know, doing data analysis like that. Yeah. I hope I'm not giving you some bastards. <laughs> <laughs> you bastards better not be using data analysis on this video. And uh, it didn't like uh, in that uh, interview with uh, Bill Benny. Yeah, I don't know if I saw the exact same one you did, but I'm pretty sure he, he probably uh, put forward the same information. I uh, wasn't it there. They're kind of already the way they do it when they say who is connected to terrorism. They do like. Uh, a really rudimentary, like, six degrees to Kevin Bacon sort of a thing, that, like, you're, like, two, you know, individuals' connections right. away from somebody who's a terrorist, therefore we can snoop in your shit. So, yeah. Sounds like the government to me. You drove the mother of yeah. Ala Locky or something. Yeah, he was One talking time. about, right, yeah, he's talking about, too, like, as far as, like, even with cell phones that... Uh, okay, yeah. Just I could be the mark, and I give Steve my phone, and then they drone his ass and call me dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like they don't go and actually go and like confirm that it was me who had the phone. You know what I mean? So it's it's pretty shitty. Note even. to self: if John ever has a beer swell <laughs> and ask me to hold his phone for a minute, perhaps think twice about it. <laughs> and he spoke. And he used that, and he was speaking to the whole double tap thing too, right? So like. The idea is you go and drone someone, and then the idea that anyone who mm. comes to help them out is also a terrorist. Yeah, so they, they, drone. they drone them again, and then mm. there's been proven cases where it's just people trying to help. You yeah, know, it, yeah, it's you know it's somebody who was a wedding. You know, yeah. Gets, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the the local dude, uh, you know, tending his you know flock of goats or sheep or something, and sees you know an explosion, goes out and grabs his truck to go help, and yeah. Doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't prove any sort of connection as to who, whether or not somebody is is a, is a violent individual or anything like that. But yeah, that is that has been a rationale that they've used. And then you translate they call that it over double to tapping. Us. Yes. They call that bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. They, they asked, you know, like could it, could it be used on U.S. soil, and they 
had to really press them hard and they were reluctant to avoid to to just answer immediately and ultimately they would say yeah, it's not to be used on u.s soil but mm -hmm. I mean, the fact was, that they had to be pressed so hard yeah that i saw uh, i think it was lockheed martin i could be wrong on that they had just uh, put out tested a new laser that will fry an engine block in like under 10 seconds from, wow. from a mile away wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that on a plane i do not no could yeah. be some dangerous shit right there that goes to another piece of equipment I think is important that a lot of people don't think about bicycles. Mm. Mm. Bicycles, in the case of any situation where gas is short, is going to be a good call. key. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you can't get gas, your car's basically worthless. You know, but your bicycle is powered by your feet. Or even an EMP or something. What about yeah. a uh, a solar bike? Then again, EMP or something. Yeah. But still, a solar bike, that stuff easily detaches if if it gets fried. Yeah. And it gives it. you a little extra oomph. Yeah. With those with the electric electric bikes, like uh, what Jesse puts together. As long as you could get one that does. Those things detach. can go up to like thirty miles an hour. Really. Downhill. <coughs> <laughs> Downhill. <laughs> you How know, steep we, is this hill? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk to Jesse about yeah. it. He, he's he's really got it down. Yeah, I've been, he has mentioned a while, but I'm pretty sure he's still doing it. I remember, uh, yeah, seeing that at Libertopia. That thing was really cool. I don't think I ever actually got to ride it, but yeah, he was. Uh, this popped into my head, uh, I guess because I was, I was listening to a, a podcast over the weekend and you were bringing up the laser that will fry through an engine block. And, and it, it kind of made me think that it's, you know, n not an original idea to myself, but like I said, uh, listen to a lecture by Andrew Colombo or Peter Colombo. I can't remember his first name for the life of me. Uh, but he was talking about, uh, you know, uh, liberty and and how it related to Thomas Paine and, and, and his philosophy of, of, of that time. And it's it's kind of interesting how, you know, we have these, I mean, we have the ability right now to wipe ourselves off the planet completely. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, it's it's our knowledge of, of physical sciences ha, has progressed to such a point where we can do that, unfortunately. But what we haven't gotten to is we haven't gotten past what I think what we all want here is, is a more peaceful society, or, or, or we haven't gotten to that yet. And we, oh, so you're talking about the evolution of science has progressed past mm -hmm. the social sciences. Yeah, yeah, your, your physical science has gotten to the point where, you know, well, doom sauce. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we haven't really, you know, as, you know, uh, as, as yeah, a society, race, yeah. we haven't, you know, really gone past all these, you know, coercive ideas and all that. And that, that's really striking that we haven't done that yet and you know at this point like how much time do we have left before we you know before that happens i personally i don't think they're ever going to use nukes ever ever it's just not going to happen as a matter of fact i don't even think they have thousands of them you know they're supposed to have thousands of them. they probably have like maybe a couple hundred pushing in and that's really that's all that's needed that's the scary part is that if they're saying that, you know back when cold war days they're like oh we've got five thousand of them like Oh, really? So was that was that to make the center of the Earth glow or just the surface? <laughs> you know, like how many times did you really need to do that? But yeah, so I I don't think uh, me like okay, so so what we know to be a, a, a society if that were to have some sort of crazy change to it, I don't think it's the end. I think humanity has been through a lot worse, and we'll probably get through it again. You know, it's just gonna suck for a bit of time and we just have to remember the the best that's that's within us you know which is not always easy to do to be honest we've all had interactions with people where we where we get angry and all that sort of stuff but you know and go to mars so and case, yeah um in case the earth gets wiped out that's kind of that that's kind of my operating uh, plan A at this point. I kind of want to get on the the plan, plan, A. <laughs> plan A. For me, I'm starting to think because well, I mean, fuck prepping. I'm going to Mars, man. So I heard this thing about a bug out bag, and my and, and, and my idea went to go to Mars. That's where my brain went. Hey, I have Elon Musk pack my bag. 
<laughs> I'm assuming his backpacks are better. Um, I mean, I, I thought of that because, uh, you know, uh, I, I you think know what, though? Payne and, and, and uh, Jefferson like, kind of said something about this, too, that, uh, you know, you have more freedom on the frontier. You know, and because mm-hmm. that's just oh, yeah. the natural. Uh, it makes sense. Not the I don't want to say the natural progression of things because what happens when you have less freedom is not necessarily a natural progression. It's you know aggression. But uh, you know, so you know the the American colonies back when there's more freedom there because there's less rulers and they're way over there on the other side and the the king can only shout so far. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, but now that that's gotten passed and you know we've gone all the way over to California. And, well, now California sucks, too. Shit, what do you do? At this point, it's like, well, yeah. there's the moon that's close, but... Then there's Antarctica, though. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, then again, how much better is Antarctica <laughs> than Mars anyway? They're both going to get just, pretty damn cold. Just as cold, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah although, that, that made pretty me sure think... Mars gets, Mars gets a little bit colder. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. <laughs> so, uh, that made me think, though... I'm pretty sure these missions to Mars um, and lo- missions like that are going. I think they could do a lot for uh, sustainability efforts. Mm-hmm. If they're if they're talking about growing their own food, um, if you can make it very efficient, which they're going to need to. If they're oh, gonna go to I Mars. can't believe we haven't even talked about growing your own food yet. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's definitely a topic that should be discussed. Well, the other thing, too, if you're talking about bugging out and everything, is uh, knowing local uh, edibles, wild edibles. Yeah, that's, that's really knowledge, important. You know? Knowing what to eat, what not to eat. No, Actually, yeah. I was going to bring up some today. I was down pulling weeds, and this time of year, a few things that grow on the property that are edible. I was going to bring them up so everybody could eat them, but I forgot. Sorry. We were talking about the backyard the other day. Yeah, a bunch of We got weeds, like, stuff. this high in part of our backyard. Yeah. A lot of them are edible. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I never that. Yeah, it, 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 the, one, the one that looks like gypsum weed, don't eat that. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that. Is it gypsum weed? Yeah, it's gypsum weed. Don't eat <laughs> uh, what, what uh What does that, uh, what does that look like for those who don't know? It's, uh, it grows really low to the ground. It's got a dark, gr- dark green leaves to it, almost kind of a grayish color too. And really, one big white flower in the middle of it that's kind of purplish in the center. Mm. Do not consume that plant in any way, shape, or form. What will happen? Ever. That is a local plant you do not want to eat. That'll be some doom. And that grows at pretty much southwest everywhere, and probably back east too. It's just it's it's a weed, like you know, just about everything else. Yeah. But you can't eat everything. You cannot eat everything. Keep That's that. why it's important to know what you can eat and what you can't eat. There's a start picking up pick up a book on local edibles, right? Yeah. Yeah, you want to be pretty sure, though. Yeah. They're very sure. Cause, yeah, some stuff will kill you. Probably safe to stay there's, away from mushrooms, there's... too, yeah. I mean, you, mushrooms, uh, if, if you know them very well, but it's it's easy to fuck that up. Yeah, I, yeah. I would not I've fuck I've heard stories mushrooms. of a really good, you know, savvy maroon, uh, mushroom you can make ID money. guys. Oh, yeah, I mean, I've Diane. seen some stuff. <laughs> and uh, there, a lot of those are worth a lot of money, too, though. Like, the, uh, I think they're truffles. Uh, but it's not easy to really get to learn those because there's does so the many am- types of mushrooms. Does the Amanita grow in Southern California? I am not sure. I'm sure in some guy's closet it does. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that may be a truffle, I'm not consuming it unless the pig says it's okay. <laughs> you know, pig says it's good. All right, I'll eat it. Sounds like a good test. At least that's they how they use used pigs to do it. for yeah. finding them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the old school way of doing it. Pigs apparently yeah. love truffles, and they'll find them like that. Um, you just gotta pull them away fast enough using, <laughs> so uh, they don't eat them. <laughs> they use hornets or, or wasps, I'm not sure. Maybe it's honeybees, I don't know. Anyway, they put them in uh, these sensors to check for different materials. They're using them for drugs and different things. But uh, yeah, they, they train, I believe it's wasps. They, they, apparently, they have extremely good uh, hmm. smell sensors, and hmm. it, it, there's an, I think, I can't remember what the show was on it, but they have, like, these, they put them in little uh, sensors that when when they're triggered, it goes and lets you know which one, but they can have, like, dozens of them in one little machine, 
It's super great. awesome. I can't believe I didn't afford it. There's, there's a crowdsourced study uh, for LSD effects on brain going on, if y'all haven't seen that. Yeah, I saw, I <laughs> saw um, the, the, Wait, the, what? Depression. There's a study the... and they pay me? Hold on! <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one on depression? Is that one? Is that it? I know there's one that's being done on uh, depression. I sent the link out a while back. I think back. this was just uh, studying the impacts of LSD on the brain. This was pretty... Anyway, mm. using a crowdsourcing mechanism to... Fund it? I yeah, think that's the it. same one that I was reading about. Yeah. I, 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 I'm assuming that they're going to handpick their... Uh, <laughs> yeah, like the DMT one. They wanted people who'd never yeah, used psychedelics if, before. Well, yeah, that they had used them before, right? I think they used people who were experienced now. No, I thought it was they wanted. It might. It might there might have been a couple, but <laughs> bummer. I know there was at least uh, at least one guy. I heard some them. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think handpicking their subjects would be a wise move. Right. But, uh, yeah, huh. preparation for the end of the world. Yes, key key to survival at that point. If you're gonna pick mushrooms, maybe pick the ones that are extra fun. It is doom after all. Might as well, you know, have a good time for a couple hours. Until the zombies come. <laughs> zombies. Zombies. Doom. Doom option 25. Zombies? Hmm. I don't know. I, I kind of don't think that's possible, but then again, there are all, all sorts of weird insects that can, like, they're, they're larvae. Someone that, that like a... Uh, some kind of a wasp. It like it. I forget what the creature was, but he he's like he injects the creature with some kind of bacteria that causes the creature to protect the eggs until it dies, gets eaten by the young. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you think you're right? It was a wasp. There's one that. There's a some creature that eats the tongue out of a fish, and then acts as the fish's tongue, and consumes <laughs> the food. Whoa! Or no, sorry, it it sucks the fish's blood is what it does. Oh wow! And it like acts as its tongue. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it keeps it alive. It keeps it alive. It eats its tongue out, and then sucks its blood, and uh, it keeps it alive by acting as a tongue. Wow. Yeah. Reasons to go on the Mars mission just increased. <laughs> Stay away from that thing. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, you better believe there's some government employee or corporate employee in some dungeon, I mean basement, that, uh, <laughs> that's trying to crack that code, right? You know? <laughs> Ten stories down in the Pentagon somewhere. <laughs> Dude, what if there was a zombie apocalypse? When those things ate your tongue and then fed off oh, it. Oh, <laughs> no. That would be doom, Did for you? sure. Yeah. Could you talk? Then you don't that? know if somebody's a zombie until you see their tongue. Yes. <laughs> More if they have problems forming the words correctly. They uh. slur their words. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> they have a slight lisp for some reason. Yeah, you gotta try to get them to say hey, certain man. words, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey Matt, you're looking a little drooly. Can you just like stick out your tongue for a second? I'm a little curious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doc. <laughs> Say teeth for me. <laughs> uh, but in, in the in the event of doom, you know, like I'm really kind of thinking that, you know, uh, included with 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 my with my backpack, I, I think I at this point, hopefully, we get to the point where I can have like you know sentient creature with me that will also yeah. defend me, right? Uh, you know, I could, and carry your stuff. You carry my stuff. There we go. Carry my stuff. Uh, I have a bug out bag, but I also want to carry this steamer trunk. Robot, please, thank you. <laughs> Here's can my you, question, though. Uh, can you fuck it? Can yes. you fuck it? <laughs> well, at that point, I would hope so. You know, can... I mean, with the companionship at that point, you survived the apocalypse. Oh, yeah. hold on, guys. We're out of time. Oh, oh yeah. damn I mean, it. I would think, mm, yeah. Right Always happens. Damn. Soon, guys. We will give you a robot sex episode. One day we were this close to it tonight, actually, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, we almost got so close. Damn close. But, Cheers. Uh, yeah, see you another time. Doom out. Next Come week. back. <laughs> Doom.